Praise the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Friends, and we invite you to enjoy a few moments of inspiration from the wonderful Word of God. You know, I've been greatly inspired, and I trust that you'll be greatly inspired. You know, one thing that we know for sure and certain is that God's Word is true, and it's true to a thousand generations. And the Scripture says that the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but the Word of the Lord will never pass away. And so we love the Word of God, and it's true. You know, I want to read a little scripture here. We'll begin with the very beginning in the book of Genesis. The scripture says this, and I want to tie it in with something in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to show you the great mind of God and that how marvelous God's Word is and that the mind of God is so real and God is so real and His Word is so real that God vindicates His Word of an absolute surety for we know that our God is a living God and the Word of God never passes away listen to what it says in the book of Genesis right in the very beginning it says this in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And so we see here in the beginning... I want to show you a comparison. I want you to look at the scripture, and I want to show you how that it is the absolute mind of God. The scripture is the absolute mind of God. And the Bible says that all prophecy, prophecy of the scripture is of no private interpretation because the word of God is true, and we can count on God's word. That In the beginning, the Bible said on the very first day, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, you know that there were six days of creation in the beginning. The Bible speaks about it. Now, I want to jump right over real quick to the sixth day. I want to show you what happened. I showed you what happened on the first day. Now, let's look and see what happened on the sixth day. And God said on the sixth day, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind and it was so and God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after their kind and God saw that it was good and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And then God said this, God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so we see that there in the beginning, on the sixth day, just before the seventh day. Now remember, the seventh day was the Sabbath. God had finished all his works. But here was in the, at the end of the creation, at the end of the seven-day creation, at the very end, in which it was six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and he rested on the seventh day, remember. And so right here on the sixth day, the Bible says God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had made. Now, I want to draw your attention to this. 
that the Bible says that first, on the first day, God began the creation and he said, let there be light. And then on the sixth day, he brought forth the, all the inhabitants and all the creatures of the earth on the sixth day. And then he gave Adam dominion. He gave mankind dominion over all the work of his hands, over everything that he had created. And then the Bible says at the end of that, the heavens and the earth were finished. The heavens and the earth were finished. Now, let's turn over in John, and I want to draw a comparison to show you the great mind of God. Over in John, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, after he had finished his ministry, then the Bible speaks about how that Jesus was taken to the cross to be crucified. Remember, he came to the earth for this. He was born for this purpose. He was born to die, and he was born to resurrect. He was born for that very purpose. He came into the earth for that very reason, to suffer and to die. Now look what it says, the Bible says, when he was hanging upon the cross. The Bible says this. It says that, that Pilate had taken, he, he, had, he had taken the cross, and Pilate had caused a, a commandment to go forth that they would take an inscription and put it above the cross where Jesus was crucified. And the Bible says Pilate wrote a title and he put it on the cross. And the writing was this. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. God prepared his heart to do that. God prepared his heart from the foundation of the world. He had to write on it, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And it says in the title read, read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus Christ was crucified was near under the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. And so it was written in three different languages on the cross. It said in the Hebrew language so that all the Jews could read it. It says Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It was written in the Greek language that all those that spoke Greek, they could read it also. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It was written in the Latin language that the Roman centurions and all the Romans could read it. And it said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, the scripture says this, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And so God did that to establish his word, for every word is true. At the mouth of three witnesses, every word is true. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And then the Bible speaks about how that there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. And the Bible says that, that Jesus, when he saw his mother standing by the cross, and the disciple John, it says, standing by the cross there, he looked down. Look what his thoughts were. His thoughts were not on himself and not on his suffering, but his thoughts were always on others, even to the very last breath. His thoughts were on others and the concern about his mother and the concern about others. And he said to that disciple, he spoke first to his mother, and he looked down upon her, and he says, Woman, behold thy son. Now, he wasn't pointing to himself or wanting her to behold him, but he was wanting her to behold John. He says, woman, behold thy son, because then he looked to John standing beside her, and he looked at John, and he said to him, he says, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. And so we see here that his thoughts were upon others even to the very last moment. And Jesus then, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. And now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with the vinegar, and put it on hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, the bitter cup, when he received that, he said, it is finished. Remember that word? Remember what happened on the sixth day? The Bible says that thus the heavens and the earth were finished. 
the evening and the morning were the sixth day, and thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And Jesus hanging there upon the cross, when he had finished his labor, when he had finished his works, when he finished what he had come into the world to do, he said, it is finished. Says, what is finished? The labors of God is now finished, friends. Praise be unto God. And one thing that is so astounding is that the next day was to be the Sabbath day. It was to be the seventh or the Sabbath day. That's astounding because right there in the beginning of the creation, when the heavens and the earth were finished, then it says on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And on the Bible speaks about this. It says that they came, the Jews, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. They besought Pilate that the legs of those on the cross should be broken. And the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other of the thieves that were crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw he was dead already, then they broke not his legs. It was, the next day was to be the Sabbath day, just the way it was on the day of creation. But what was to follow the Sabbath day? What was to follow it? It was to be followed by the first day of the week. Because right after that, then Jesus, Jesus was placed in the grave on the Sabbath day. And the earth was quiet. Satan was even quiet. Satan had done what he came to do thinking he had killed and destroyed God. He had overcome by putting Jesus to death. And all the world was quiet. There was quiet on the Sabbath day. But watch, the next day is a day of concern because the Bible says, then early the first day of the week, which was the next day, it said the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene early while it was yet dark to the sepulcher. And she saw the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and she ran and she told Peter and she told John uh, that, that the Lord was not in the sepulcher. And they came and they ran together and John outran Peter to the sepulcher. And he's stooping down, he looked in uh, uh, he, and, and he, Peter saw the linen clothes lying and Peter came, followed John, and he went into the sepulcher, and he saw the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And then went in that other disciple, John, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed, for as yet they knew not the scripture, they didn't understand it, that he must rise again from the dead. And so Mary stood without weeping, and then when she stood outside the tomb weeping, she looked in again, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have lain him. And when she said thus, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing, but she knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing he was a gardener, said to him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where you've taken him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said, Mary. And she turned herself and looked at him. And she said to him, Rabboni, or Rabbi, which is to say master. And Jesus says, touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended unto my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary came and told the disciples these words. And then were the disciples glad. You know, this speaks about the first day. It was the morrow after the Sabbath, the first day. And so when God had finished, Jesus on the cross said it is finished. Why? Because God was bringing about a creation. God was laboring to bring about a creation. Jesus was laboring on the cross. He labored as man. He labored to bring about a creation. 
what was what the, was the creation? A new creation. Not that first creation that Moses spoke about, but it was a new creation. Praise God. He was bringing forth a new Adam, the second man Adam. Not the first man Adam, but the second man Adam. And he brought forth the second man Adam, Jesus Christ. And the sons of God, for we are now the sons of God in Jesus Christ. Praise be unto God. The, what did the Bible say about the first day? What did Moses say? On the first day, he said, let there be light, and there was light. And then what is this, the first day? Jesus arose from the dead. The Son of God came forth from the dead. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The light came forth. It was a new beginning, a new creation, a new day. And friends, we are living in the new day of the Lord. We are living in the day of the light. We are living in the day of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Because we walk in Jesus. Christ. We are the new creation. We are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Not like the first man, Adam, that fell, but it's the second man, Jesus Christ. And we are now the body of Christ in the earth. Friends, now, this, this was given to Adam in the garden, and it says, Adam, I give to you to rule over all of my creation, over all the work of my hands, over the animals, over all creation, everything I put it in subjection unto you until the fall. But now, here in the second, in the second, and the regeneration of the sons of God, friends, all things are now ours because Jesus went away and he received the kingdom and he came back and he said, that which I received, that give I unto thee. And he gave it unto us. He gave us the kingdom. And now we, as Jesus says, I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. It says, thou shalt tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Everything is ours. Hallelujah. You have power over the sun. You have power over the moon. You have power over the water. You have power over the storm. You have power over death itself. Through Jesus Christ. Because greater is he that is in you, which is Jesus Christ, than he that is in the world. We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth. This is the new creation. Oh, sons of God, let yourself be filled with this mind. Let yourself be filled with this mind because you'll soon see, you'll soon see a manifestation of that which I speak about right now. There is coming a manifestation of the sons of God and you are being transformed and being changed into that image right now by the hearing of God's word and taking on the mind of Christ Remember, friends, you are sons of God without rebuke. Praise be unto God. Walk with God. Talk with God. Let God walk with you and enjoy the power of faith, which is in Jesus Christ. May God bless you is our earnest prayer.